Hello. Welcome to Atune University. Here we are going to start our new session by understanding Amazon EC2 monitoring and auto scaling. We will see how these features can be used separately or together to build scalable and powerful web applications. There are three basic terms uses in auto scaling in AWS. First, scale up, second, scale down, and third, scale out. Scale up means achieving scalability by resizing the capacity like compute, memory, elastic block storages of existing Amazon EC2 instances. Scale down means decreasing the number of Amazon EC2 instances or the configuration for existing EC2 instances. Scale out means achieving scalability by increasing the number of Amazon EC2 instances. The auto scaling and monitoring features of the Amazon EC2 services give you easy on-demand access to capabilities that once required complex system architecture and a hefty hardware investment. Here we have three types of auto scaling. Vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, and side-by-side -side scaling. Any web application must have the ability to replace the existing one's assets, or horizontal scaling, where additional servers are positioned alongside with the existing assets. Vertical scaling is sometimes called a scale-up model, and horizontal scaling is sometimes called a scale-out model, when side-by-side -side is orthogonal. Vertical scaling appears to be the easiest way to add capacity. You start out with a server of unpretentious way, and use it until it no longer meets your desires. You achieve a bigger server, shift your code and data over to it, and discard the old server. Performance is excellent until the newer, larger system reaches its capability. You purchase once more, repeating the progression until your hardware supplier informs you that you're successively on the largest hardware that they have, and that you've no more scope to variety. Vertical scaling can be expensive. Each time you raise to a bigger system, you also make larger conjecture. If you're essentially buying hardware, your foremost step-ups cost you thousands of dollars. Your anon ones cost you tens or flat hundreds of thousands of dollars. At some point you may have to invest in a likewise costly backup system, which will stay behind redundant unless the unthinkable happens and you require to use it to persist operations. The essential point is that, the limits of scalability are due to the limits of a single computer or perhaps the limits of an affordable single computer. Horizontal scaling is slightly more complex, but far more flexible and scalable in the enduring. In place of upgrading to a bigger server, you gain another one and dispose to share the storage and processing load diagonally to servers. When two servers no longer assemble your requirements, you add a third, a fourth, and so on. This scale-out model allows you to add assets incrementally and economically. As your fleet of servers grow, you can actually increase the reliability of your system by eliminating dependencies on any fussy server. Of course, allotment the storage and processing load across a convoy of servers is sometimes easier said than done. Horizontal scaling properly fits for the elastic nature of cloud computing platforms. In the real world, not all of our scaling concerns are with the system, we tend to have many copies of systems. It turns out that another great use of the cloud generally including the Azure cloud is for spinning up these other instances of our system for many purposes. Sometimes we don't want one N node application, we want N one node apps. We give the name this use of cloud to be scaling side by side or juxtaposition scaling a sign of putting similar systems beside each other since they are a related collection of sorts even though the instances of systems scaled side by side to are not connected to or operationally related to any of the other instances. Scaling side by side happens when you use the cloud's elastic environment to create supplementary instances of a system such as for test or production. Also, scaling side by side is orthogonal to scaling up or scaling out. It is more about scaling to support more uses of more variants for on the whole environmental efficiency. And, finally, like other ways to pull cloud infrastructure, 
To efficiently scale side-by-side -side, you will lead from some automation to easily provision an instance of your application. Auto scaling allows you to scale your Amazon EC2 instance capacity up or down automatically according to predefined metrics. By definition we can say AWS auto scaling allows us to scale our Amazon EC2 capacity out or down automatically according to the load patterns. By example, we can expand the number Amazon EC2 instances from 1 to 100 plus automatically during load peaks. And also we can reduce the number of Amazon EC2 instances from 100 plus to 1 automatically during load valleys. AWS Auto Scaling can do following things. It can handle predictable bursts, unpredictable bursts and constantly growing bursts. Scale out Amazon EC2 instances seamlessly and automatically when demand increases. Scale down unwanted Amazon EC2 instances automatically and save money when demand subsides. Decide the scaling based on AWS CloudWatch metrics. Auto scale your web server in combination with AWS Elastic Load Balancing. Now, we are going to learn how auto scaling works and about its architecture. As you can see in image, here we have our web app, or we can say that our AWS instance. Whenever users comes to AWS CloudWatch monitor them, when load increases AWS Auto Scaling distributes its load on the Sassity server with the help of Elastic Load Balancer, Amazon Auto Scaling creates new server, when load increases, and, Load Balancer balances this load among multiple server, and, provides us consistent performances. When load decreases Auto Scaling terminate that additional servers. So we can get consistent performance using Auto Scaling, and, Elastic Load Balancing. These are few Amazon Auto Scaling concepts. Auto Scaling Group, it means logical grouping of multiple Amazon EC2 instances for easy scaling and management. Health Check, it describes calls to check on the health status of each Amazon EC2 instance in an auto scaling group. Launch Configuration, it captures the parameters necessary to create new EC2 instances in auto scaling mode. Triggers. A cloud watch alarm and auto scaling policy that describes the actions when the alarm threshold is crossed. Two triggers are there named scaling out and scaling down needs to be created. Policy, it is set of instructions for auto scaling that tells the service how to respond to AWS cloud watch alarm messages. Now we will see the steps to configure Amazon auto scaling with AWS elastic load balancing. Configuring AWS Auto Scaling with AWS CLB, Elastic Load Balancer. Here you need to add load balancer name at, my load balancer written in the snapshot, and, provide your load balancer port number at LB port equals 80, by default this port is set on 80, and you need to replace instance port equals 8080 with your port number to forward requests. Create a launch configuration. Here. You need to provide your launch configuration name at text mile config, your machine image at instance type or size, and key pair group settings for the Amazon EC2 instance. Edit with your configuration and launch your instance. Create an AWS auto scale group. Now put your group name, availability zone for your auto scale 2 instance, load balancer's name, and Amazon EC2 instance number minimum instance, and, maximum instance. Place your load balancer name in which the auto number of Amazon EC2 instances launched will be attached instances. Now configure trigger for auto scale. You need to edit your group name as per your instance and CPU limit. Here the field lower CPU limit is 20% and upper limit is 80%, and your instance scale out with 4 Amazon EC2 instances. You can set upper CPU limit and lower CPU limit as per your configuration. Let's see the steps to configure Amazon Auto Scaling with AWS AMI. Amazon Auto Scaling can launch new EC2 instances from S3 backed AMIs, as well as EBS backed AMI. AMI should be present on the same region where the EC2 instances will be launched in Auto Scale Group. 
am I need not to be present on the same AZ, availability zone, where the EC2 instances will be launched in auto scale group. This is the flow for S3 backed AMIs for auto scaling. 1. Web requests are sent to the Amazon ELB. 2. AWS CLB transfers the requests to Amazon EC2 instances launched in US East 1 availability zone. 3. Amazon EC2 instances are configured to be part of AWS Auto Scale Group. 4. AWS Auto Scaling launches the new AWS CC2 instances from the S3 backed AMIs. This is the flow for EBS backed AMIs for auto scaling. 1. Web requests are sent to the Amazon ELB. 2. AWS CLB transfers the requests to Amazon EC2 instances launched in US East 1B availability zone. 3. Amazon EC2 instances are configured to be part of AWS Auto Scale Group. 4. AWS Auto Scaling launches the new AWS CC2 instances from the EBS backed AMIs. We can compare EBS backed AMIs auto scaling and EC2 backed AMIs auto scaling in following ways. EBS backed AMIs are faster to launch compared to S3 backed AMIs. EBS backed AMIs launch in 30 or 30 plus seconds approximately. Where S3 backed AMIs launch in 4 minutes approximately. Sometimes it is better to have EC2 instances launched faster in auto scaling when overall CPU threshold is breached. EBS backed AMIs option in AWS auto scaling may not be cost effective compared to S3 backed AMIs. Now we will see the steps to configure Amazon auto scaling and AWS elastic load balancer. These are the step for AWS auto scaling with elastic load balancing. 1. This architecture is suitable for web layer only. AWS CLB is attached to the AWS auto scaling group. 2. AWS CLB act as the gateway and transfers the HTTP request it receives to Amazon EC2 instances in round robin schedule. 3. Amazon EC2 instances are configured to be part of AWS Auto Scale Group. 4. AWS Auto Scaling launches the new Amazon EC2 instances. 5. AWS Auto Scaling, AWS CloudWatch and AWS Elastic Load Balancing works in union. These are the step for AWS Auto Scaling without Elastic Load Balancing. 1. Reference auto scaling architecture in AWS not using AWS CLB. 2. Message needed for processing are put in the AWS squares using message producer clients. 3. Master Amazon EC2 instance node controls the scale up scale down of the processing nodes using AWS auto scaling programmatically. 4. Auto scaled Amazon EC2 instance processing nodes picks the messages from Amazon squares. AWS CloudWatch can monitor Amazon EBS, Amazon EC2, Amazon Rhodes, Amazon SNS, Amazon SQS, Auto Scaling, and Elastic Load Balancing. Metrics defined by name, namespace, dimensions, timestamp. Data come from any application or business activity from which you collect data, not just Amazon Web Services products and applications. Namespaces. We can see in the right side, these are the different namespaces used in AWS. We can say it is a short form of the full long Amazon product names. Timestamps. Each metric data point must be marked with a timestamp. Valid ranges are up to two weeks in the past, or up to one day in the future. By default, CloudWatch creates a timestamp based on the time the data was received. Remember it is, better to provide the timestamp under UTC, and, the, statistics from CloudWatch, all times reflect the UTC time zone. Periods. It is the length of time for a specific statistic. It durations has two types, short as one minute, or 60 seconds and, 
long as 2 weeks or 1,209,600 seconds. Start time and end time are measured by counting periods. Regions Each Amazon region completely isolated from the others. CloudWatch does not aggregate data across regions. Metrics are completely separate between regions. Alarms Watch is a single metric over a specified time period. It performs one or more actions. Alarms based on the value of the metric to a given threshold over a number of time periods. Action, it is a notification sent to an SNS topic or auto-scaling policy. Invoke actions for sustained state changes only. It specify the period over which the comparison is made. It specify how many consecutive periods the threshold must be breached before you are notified. They are categories for metrics characteristics. It can define by name value pair. It can aggregate data across all dimensions. Up to 10 dimensions to a metric is possible in this.